Hey guys, welcome to episode 20 of the Real Estate of Mind podcast. Um, it's your host, um, Andrew Yanni. And here I'm gonna have a special episode on how to shop for a mortgage. You're gonna wanna know what borrower you are and what type of institution you go to to shop. Stay tuned. Yeah. I'm in a real estate and a real estate of mind. Hey everybody, how you guys doing today? Um, thanks for tuning into uh, my YouTube channel or you know wherever you guys are watching this. Today I wanted to talk about a subject that you know a lot of people want to know about, which is basically, guys, how to shop for a mortgage. I'm gonna explain to you how to shop for a mortgage, how to shop the very best way, not only for you guys to get the best rate, um, to get the best deal and to buy, you know, the house that you guys actually want to buy to get the best fees, all that kind of stuff. So first and foremost, I want to break down, basically there's four different types of institutions you guys can go to, to get a mortgage. Big banks and credit unions, that's one group. And then you've got retail lenders and then we got wholesale lenders. So I say big banks and credit unions, they are very similar institutions. They operate in very similar ways. They have very similar federal guidelines that they have to um, oblige by. And then you got retail lenders and wholesale lenders. And again, those two are also very similar in the way that they operate. I'm going to break down a little bit of you know all four of those really quickly. And then we're going to get into knowing, obviously, because once you know the type of institution you guys should be working with, then um, we're going to decide on what, who, who are you as a borrower? Who are you as a borrower will also lend itself to know which institution kind of to go to and the kind of the situation that you're in. So we'll start out with big banks and we'll start out with credit unions. Big banks and credit unions, usually a big bank is going to be either for somebody who has a lot of money, I call them the really rich or the wealthy, or somebody who is median to low income. And why do I say that? Guys, if you're median to low income, these bigger banks and the, the, the bigger banks, you know, the Chases, the Wells Fargo, City, US Bank, any, any big bank, um, any bank you can walk into, they have a quota set out where they have to they have to lend guys to the median income and the lower income people. The certain amount of their portfolio has to be lent to those individuals. So if you guys, if you guys are one of those individuals that are in that category, median to low income or the higher incomes. Okay, now the higher incomes guys, what I mean by that is if you're purchasing a home nationally, if your loan amount is above $766,000 right now, you're going to always want to pay attention to, you know, the conforming national uh, loan amounts. If you guys are above that amount, then the banks can put you into one of their portfolio products. Obviously, big banks are going to be much harder to work with, a lot of red tape, you got to have good credit scores, a low debt to income ratio. What that means is you make a lot of money and you're taking out a mortgage that isn't very much of your income. And when I say very much, we're talking, you need to be probably around 40% of your income or less. So if you make $10,000 a month, you guys, and you want to, guys want to shop at one of these big banks, get into one of those portfolio loans that they have, and they have great rates on the portfolio products you want to have a $4,000 house payment that's PITI, Principal Interest Taxes Insurance, and I include HOAs in there as well. Again, if you make 10,000 bucks, guys, going to a big bank, make sure your payments are going to be around 4,000 bucks or less to get the best deal at a big bank. Also, big banks, I was just talking about portfolio products. They cater to the wealthy. They will give you a discount and ask for it. Chase has something called Chase Private Client. So if you guys are a Chase Private Client, in other words, you hold, I believe it's at least 250K um, with them, you become a private client. Don't quote me, I don't work at Chase, but it's what I've been hearing. If you, you will qualify for discounts on your mortgage. Why is that? They want you as a client. Because if you're a Chase private client, you're already holding. You know how much money they're making on your money, by the way, guys? There's a reason you're, you need to get a good deal on that mortgage. And I would recommend you not go to a guy like me. You go to, you go to Citibank. You go to U.S. Bank. You go to 
um, you know, Chase, etc., Bank of America, all these people, they will cater to you because they have extra, I'm not going to say extra collateral, they have money, your money that they're already making money with. So they will give you discounts on the other products that they offer. So again, guys, big banks and credit unions, um, they'll have specialty products, they'll have some down payment assistance loans that you guys want to pay attention to. So if you guys are looking for specialty products, down payment assistance or larger jumbo type loans, and they portfolio, they, they keep those loans on the books. So because, because they keep them on the books, they're able to give you better deals. So if you're that type of person, that's where you're going to want to shop with, okay? Now there's the other side of the market, retail lenders and wholesale lenders. What is a retail lender? What the hell is that, right? So retail lenders are lenders that lend off of what's called either a warehouse line or sometimes we call it a credit line. They're going to lend to you and they're going to sell the loan right away. The majority of loans in the United States that are done are done with retail lenders. Why? Because retail lenders, they have control over the underwriting process, um, but they do only have one set of rates. So that's one downside to using a retail lender um, versus wholesale lenders. This is my channel. I am a wholesale lender. So I'm going to talk to you obviously a little bit about what we do and why it is advantageous depending on your situation to use a wholesale lender. So wholesale lenders, guys, I have a myriad of products. I have a ton of different lenders to go to. And that way we can get you the best rate. So guys in the retail channel will say, oh, you don't have control or you can't move quickly. It's kind of a, a misnomer or it's, it's just something that people say to deflect from using a wholesale lender. Oh, you're, you guys are more expensive. It's actually opposite of that. Okay, so guys, retail lender versus wholesale lender. Retail lender is supposed to have amazing service and they should be able to close your loans very quickly and all of retail lenders should be able to do something called a TBD underwrite. All you realtors out there, you're going to love TBD underwrites. It's where we, we they're going to underwrite your file prior to getting into escrow. We know all the conditions that are going to be related to your loan so we can get the deal done quickly. That's the advantage of a retail lender. Speed, um, underwriting um, in the beginning, and yeah, just essentially, I would say it's really the main thing is going to be speed because using a retail lender, when and again, I'm talking all this is about purchasing a home, by the way. So when you guys are going to a retail lender, you're not going for price. A retail lender is nine times out of ten going to be priced higher than a wholesale lender. That's because a retail lender revolves around a corporate structure, guys. Like you're talking, okay, you I'll give you some examples. We're talking about the rocket mortgages of the world, Loan Depot, Guaranteed Rate, Cross Country Mortgage. That's just to name a few of the retail lenders. Most likely, if you're a consumer, you might have heard of one of those. But in general, you you know, you probably haven't heard of any of them. And you are going to be most likely referred by a real estate agent to one of these retail lenders. The reason real estate agents like retail lenders, speed and everything is in-house. And I'm talking about when you guys are just the, the underwriter is usually in-house. Um, but unfortunately, now with, with nowadays, everybody's remote. So again, people are working less and less in-house, but they call it in-house. In other words, they work for that company. Um, so in-house underwriting that your loan documents or loan docs, they're done there at that specific branch that you're working with usually. And the funding is also done by that branch. So in other words, they just have a lot of control and they can go up to the underwriter and they can ask questions to get your deal through. Again, wholesale lenders on the opposite side of the spectrum, or I shouldn't say opposite side, on the other side of that spectrum. Because again, we're not talking about banks and credit unions, we're talking about retail wholesale lenders. A wholesale lender like me, I'm going to be, I still am able to talk to underwriters. I'm still able to get you a TBD underwrite. We're just less known entities. A wholesale lender is usually going to be a smaller company or a loan officer that is referred or a mortgage broker that is referred by your real estate agent. Why would you want to use a wholesale lender? When you're buying a traditional home, um, 
a traditional home or you have a very difficult situation. In other words, you have income situations or you have credit situations, you're going to want to use a wholesale lender. And wholesale lenders, guys, they're also known as a mortgage broker. Mortgage broker and wholesale lender, they're synonymous with each other. So if you're looking for a broker, they're essentially a wholesale lender. They're going to be able to get you the best deal on the market. And they're going to be able to find that niche product if you have a tough situation. Again, bad credit, don't claim income. Um, and they have a ton of down payment assistance programs as well. Again, the retail channel will have that too. So anyway, now when you guys are shopping for a mortgage, you have to know what type of person you are. Are you a guy that has a bunch of money at you know XYZ Credit Union? They might be able to get you the best deal. I would go there first. If you're a big, big credit union guy, you have either hundreds of thousands with a credit union, your business is with the credit union, et cetera, et cetera. If you guys are have a relationship with the credit union, a banking relationship, banks want to keep you as clients. They want your mortgage, especially if it's a large mortgage. They want it. See what they can do for you, especially on the larger mortgages. And the credit unions, again, they're very similar to big banks. Um, the, I, if you guys have a lot of money with a big bank, if you guys hold, like I was just talking about, if you have a ton of money with Chase, Go to Chase. Tell Chase, I got a million bucks with you. Like, give me the best deal. Give me a discount on my mortgage. My wholesale lender or my mortgage broker is offering me this rate. You guys definitely have to match it. You guys got a million dollars of my money. I need you to match it or do better. Only problem with big banks is um, the stereotype, and it is true. Um, it's much more difficult to get your loan through. You guys need to be clean high credit scores, high income. If you're a self-employed business owner, you need to claim your income. And I'm not talking about gross income. I'm talking about net income. People are always telling me, oh, I make, I make $2 million. I make $3 million. I end up looking at their bottom line. Their bottom line is 30 to 40 grand. Business owners have a lot of expenses. It takes a lot of money to run a business. And these business owners, they'll walk into Chase and you claimed like 30 grand, you're buying a million dollar property. How are you going to be able to afford this? I understand they do make a lot of money. If that's your situation, then a mortgage broker is probably going to be your best bet, not only for the best rate, but also for the best product. So again, you guys got to know what type of client you are in order to get the best deal on a mortgage. But then you're going to say, hey, I don't want to run my credit. Don't run my credit. Uh, it's going to hurt my score. Well, I just pulled up um, on a website I was um, kind of looking at before we kind of started this started this chat in this video. It's off consumerfinance.gov, guys. We're going to share it for you on the screen. Um, does shopping around for a mortgage hurt my credit? That's a big question that people want to know. And that quick answer is no. It does not hurt your credit consumerfinance.gov, and it's literally an excerpt off their website, no, within a 45-day window, multiple credit checks from, from mortgage lenders are recorded on your credit report as a single inquiry. This is because other lenders realize that you're only going to buy one home. You can shop around and get multiple pre-approvals and official loan estimates. Again, this is off the consumerfinance.gov website. If you don't believe me, you could believe this government website. If you don't want to believe them, then you know, good luck to you. You must be a conspiracy theorist and you must believe a lot of weird stuff anyway, but it's off their website, man. Go look at it. Um, I'm not making this up. I mean, I'll share it with you. DM me or, you know, comment and I'll, you know, get back to you with that website if it's not readily available in the chat. Now, again, back to talking about shopping for a mortgage. Hopefully you guys kind of understand the different type of institutions that are out there. Again, big banks and credit unions are on one end. Retail lenders and wholesale lenders are on one end when you're shopping for a mortgage. Again, know what client you are. I could even help you. I could, and honestly, in 10 quick seconds, I could tell you what type of client you are and where you're going to get the best deal. I want all my clients to get the best deals on their loans and for their family. I'm not here to get every loan. I know that what we do here is probably, honestly, 95% of the United States is going to be using the products that we have. And that's where you're going to get the best deal. And I'm here to just put the word out. You don't, you don't have to go to me, but I would suggest if you're a person that let's just say has, you know, minimal 
a minimal down payment to a large down payment, but you don't have a bunch of savings after that down payment with your bank. If you're shopping for a loan, a million dollars and under usually, we're going to be the best bet for you because we'll have speed and we'll have price. So it's kind of a combination of both things and we'll have a lot of control. So your real estate agent is going to want to work with somebody that is a wholesale lender or a mortgage broker for a lot of those benefits. And again, if you want, if you want to talk more about this, comments are available. Um, and if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel, by the way, if I haven't told you already, helps the algorithms, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. And you know, let's bring the subscribers up. Um, and last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about is, you know, the cost of living in, in work. So I'm based in the LA area. For all of you guys that don't know, I'm based in Los Angeles, Southern California area. And KTLA is a big news provider here in Los Angeles. Um, we're, it's known as the Channel 5 News for you guys that aren't from the area. Anyway, they I just saw an article that they just posted, um, and they're reporting some news off of Zillow. They're saying the cost of homes went up year by year by 9.3% in March of 2024 compared to the same time last year, according to Zillow. The average price of a single family detached home in the greater Los Angeles area is $959,400. Holy hell. It sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. $960,000 for a single family detached home in the greater LA area is a lot. And the greater LA area for you guys, again, for you guys that aren't from the area, we're not considering um, the Antelope Valley. We're not considering the high desert. Really the greater LA area, you're talking about really anything in Los Angeles all the way down to, you know, Torrance, the San Pedro area, Long Beach, um, and obviously, you know, East LA and even into Downey, Whittier, all that kind of stuff. Nine hundred, About $960,000 to buy a home in the Los Angeles area. Well, how much do you have to make to buy a home in the LA area now, according to uh, Zillow? And how much do I have to make to afford that home in the LA area? So I'm going to go over a quick example. I found a house in LA. This house is $985,000. If you guys want to look it up, maybe we'll put it on the screen. It's 2527 West Boulevard in LA. It was just listed. It's a beautiful home. It looks like it's freshly rehabbed. Again, $985,000. And it is right in the LA area. It's right off the 10. It's right south of the 10 freeway for those of you guys um, that are kind of familiar with the area. I like the area. You're, you know, you're pretty much borderline West LA. It's $985,000, which is roughly the same price that of the average home in LA, according to Zillow. Again, now how much do you have to make and how much is it going to cost me per month? Because that's, you know, that's kind of the main things that people are going to be looking for, right? So a $985,000 home. I'm going to assume you guys have some money to put down. Obviously, all these examples will get um, a little bit different. Let's say you have 10% down. 10% down of $985,000 is $98,500. So that's going to be my down payment. My principal and interest using a 7.25 interest rate. Um, APR will be a little bit above that, somewhere around 7.49% on the APR. But let's just use a 7.25 interest rates. By the way, we're in the, today is, you know, we're at the end of April. The average interest rate in America, guys, it's 7.4%. So I'm using as a wholesale lender, we have rates that are below market. So that's why I'm quoting you now on this, this new home in Los Angeles with a below market interest rates, because that's what we do for you people, man, we get you the best deal. So um, 7.25, $985,000 home in the Los Angeles area, putting 10% down 98,500, you're putting down the principal and interest. So just the mortgage, you're talking about $6,047 and 99 cents. You also got to pay for home insurance. You also got to pay for property taxes. And you also got to pay for something called mortgage insurance, which if you guys are, um, if you guys been shopping for a mortgage, you know, it's just something you got to pay to the mortgage lender when you're putting down less than 20%. Now the payment's going to be $7,500 a month for that house. And I'm using about $205 for home insurance. We all know home insurance has went up and it's been a pain in the butt to get home insurance in all the whole state of California right now. 
So $7,500 a month for the home. And that's after putting $98,500 down. And don't forget, you guys have closing costs. So you guys are running about, I would say, $112 to $115K. Let's just say $115K out the door, $112 to $115K. It's going to cost you $7,500 a month. Now, how much do I have to make to purchase this home? Well, you're going to have to purchase a minimum of double that, that makes it $15,000 a month, right, to qualify for that home. But that doesn't account for your car. That doesn't account for your credit cards. That doesn't account for any student loans that you guys have. So I would suggest that you guys make at least $18,000 a month in order to purchase this home. And better yet, to make your DTI or your debt to income level a little bit lower, I'd suggest at least 20K a month. So now we're talking about $240,000 a year. In Los Angeles, it's just, it's gonna require, it's gonna require double income unless you guys have a huge down payment, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or, you know, boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, whatever your situation is. Roommates, you guys wanna partner up on this house. Most likely, you guys are gonna have to double up the income. We're gonna need about 20K. And it's not we, it's, it's just any mortgage provider you talk to. And again, I talked about shopping with the big banks. They're going to be a little bit more strict. Um, they're going to be a little bit more strict when shopping. They're going to want to be, have your debt. They're going to want you to make a little bit more to get you into that, that best interest rates that the banks have to offer. They're going to require a little bit more income. And don't forget higher credit scores. Banks are going to need much higher credit scores in order for you to qualify for this home than a traditional mortgage lender or a wholesale lender. Now, again, I think we went over a lot today um, and I took up enough of your time. Again, now that's how to shop for a mortgage. Again, know what type of borrower you are. If you're a, We're going to go over it really quickly at the end just to wrap up and then I'm going to let you guys go. Big banks and credit unions. You guys, to get the best deals there, high credit scores, good savings and you want it to get you want to get into their portfolio products if you guys are um, purchasing a larger more expensive home closer to the million dollar mark if you guys are a lower income median to lower income for your area you're again big banks and credit unions might be a decent option there as well they might have again some port products that they hold they hold your loan so they might offer good products there but in general a retail lender or a wholesale lender is going to be your best bet to when you're purchasing a home. And I didn't talk about refinancing because refinancing is a whole nother ball game. I might save that for another video on um, the best place to shop for rates when you're refinancing a loan because it just comes with a ton of different situations. And I, and I kind of want to wrap this up and make it quick for you guys. Um, again, high credit scores, high net worth, or low or low income people with low income, high credit scores, big banks and credit unions. If you guys are average, average to middle, you know, um, I guess upper middle class type of income in your area, retail lenders and wholesale lenders is how you're going to get the best rate on a purchase. And again, according to consumer, um, the government website, consumerfinance.gov, you have 45 days to rerun your credit or pull your credit with multiple lenders. And again, we don't pull your credit. When we do our pre-approvals, we do something called a soft check on your credit. So it actually doesn't even harm your credit score. So again, you could also, if you don't believe this website, ask your lender for a soft check. I went over a lot today, guys. If you have any questions, DM me. DM me. Just leave a message in the comments. We can figure out what kind of borrower you guys are. And again, thank you guys for tuning in to how to shop for a mortgage. Talk to you guys later.